any kind of analysis, uh, you should have a data. Right? Like we are seeing in a data analytics, you need to have some sort of data. So uh, link analysis uh, is again a type of data processing or data analytics, which uh, requires some sort of data. And that data in case of link analysis is uh, the text data, data uh, or maybe uh, details written on the links, right? So you can, you can have this impression that uh, in the link analysis or to perform link analysis, you need to acquire the data on the link, right? That is one thing. So uh, you might have heard about the term anchor text, right? So anchor text is the first source of data, first, uh, first input for the link analysis, you can see. Right, so we will be discussing on it. Uh, and naturally, you should. So the context for the link analysis is that uh, naturally we have performed uh, text acquisition just before text transformation. And during text trans during this text acquisition phase, we have gathered a lot of uh, data and metadata and all whatever things are placed in a web page. We have gathered all details, right? And naturally, when 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 we are uh, crawling on a web page content, there will be text, there will be some anchor text also. So anchor text are uh, basically a uh, text with some property, right? So based on that only parser component during text transformation, this parser component will identify uh, that this text is our anchor text. It is not a traditional text, right? So it is based on the structure. So that's what we have taken that uh, the role of parser in the text transformation is to recognize that structure, recognize the structure of the text. So during uh, parsing itself, during the uh, parsing stage or parsing uh, level, you can easily uh, identify that, okay, this part of text is our anchor text, right? So naturally, uh, whenever you have observed, you are observing into the parsing phase that a certain text is a anchor text, you should immediately send this anchor text to the link analysis phase. Like you can see here, we have placed parsing, stopping, and stemming. That is one track, one assembly line, one text transformation phase. Second could be the link analysis. So from this whole data from one web content which we have gathered, during text acquisition, parcel will identify, parcel component will identify, recognize that, okay, this part of text is, uh, it is not a normal text, it is normal traditional text, it is an anchor text. So, uh, we, so whenever we are browsing on the websites on a daily routine, whenever uh, we are exploring or reading any information on the website or any web page, you might have observed some sort of appearance of these kind of text. So, so I, I hope it is visible to you. So you can see in the right side uh, figure, uh, these highlighted uh, text like SEU gold, how to double Twitter impression to one uh, or to one million a month, something. So these texts which are uh, visible or maybe uh, differently written or different uh, color code has been used are considered as an anchor text because these texts are uh, basically having some nature of clickability that you can click on these text and uh, goes to or reaches to the different destination, different websites, right? So you are these texts are basically uh, providing you the possibility to, to to basically anchor your search or navigate your search to the different destination, right? So these texts are easily recognizable. So naturally, the responsibility of parser is to recognize these kind of text, right? So once you identify these anchor text, you can easily perform, easily perform link analysis and link extraction, something like that. So uh, that is the uh, context of this whole discussion, which we will be taking uh, for today's class. So you can see uh, for normal text, naturally you will be sending all the extracted data to stopping, then stopping will be denoising, it will be removing some repeating and extremely re extremely repeating and little meaning content, little meaning text from the whole data. Then we will be sending these uh, process data to the stemming component. The stemming component will be uh, again, again, cleaning the data. So it will be 
uh, achieving only uh, root words or maybe stem words that that is that so this first track is for processing the text normal text traditional text right uh, when parser observe that there is some some sort of anchor text some type of anchor text is available it will immediately send that part to the link analysis extraction right and naturally in the link analysis and extraction component on the track there will be some processing there will be some algorithm phrase to perform a task right and after performing link analysis and extraction link analysis and extraction we will have a list of anchor text on the web page right because we have gathered the content from a page so let's take this example that you have taken a content from an it website so some of the content will be sent to stopping and stepping stemming up track and some of the content which is of form tech anchor text will be sent to link analysis phase link analysis and extraction phase or track so in this link analysis and extraction phase we will be we will be identifying that what are the destination sites has been placed on the anchor text and and we will be performing performing some link analysis and we can rank we can uh, claim that the NITK website is good site it is basically having higher importance something like that for a certain user search right so you have you should have this clarity on uh, uh, basically concept that link analysis and extraction uh, link analysis is used to to rank a particular web page right it is never being used or never uh, being supporting to the matching process right so you cannot use the link analysis the outcome of link analysis to match to perform matching so that's why it is said that the outcome of link analysis and extraction cannot be used to perform matching right it is only used to perform or to help the ranking component right so it is very sure that okay, suppose there is a website and there is a website name that uh, times of india something like that so times of india text because the name anchor text will be times of india naturally in the backdrop in the background there is a url there is a, a website or ip address assigned to it right so this times of india text cannot be used to perform a match in the user search right so this times of india cannot be converted into the index terms that is for sure right and that is the difference between uh, this parsing stopping stemming with link analysis extraction so link analysis extraction is only used this you this uh, phase or this track is used to to provide some sort of weight some sort of rank rank to a certain web page where these anchor texts are placed right so uh, so naturally so this whole discussion of anchor text is happening in the case of web source so like in the suppose you are designing a search system for desktop desktop search naturally in the desktop search case our data is the files which we have kept in our desktop our pc so there we, we do not have any link kind of scenario on the data on the files right so this link analysis uh, uh, is required only only in the scenario where we have web contents web links web pages in our hand to process right it should be very clear so the very first thing you should be having in your mind that link analysis and extraction will be required only in the case of web source web source web source means it could be a, a small uh, you know a, a small a website it could be a set of websites it could be a deep web it could be any kind of content which is placed on the web web uh, uh, arrangement right so it is not required uh, basically in other scenario because when we have started this this discussion on this whole search engine or search system uh, entity uh, one thing is very uh, uh, important that what is the target content what is the target entity you are uh, developing a search system right so other than web source you do not need to perform link analysis right so after that it is very uh, obvious and clear that uh, this uh, link analysis is only uh, uh, basically important for the ranking process or maybe ranking component on the retrieve results right so because retrieval or matching will be performed based on the 
performed based on the terms which has been extracted from stopping stemming right so outcome of this stopping is stemming will be in the form of terms which will be defined as a index term in the future and the matching the matching of content the matching of matching for the user search will be performed based on these index terms which are derived by stopping stopping and stemming track right and you will be naturally assigning some ranks some scores some weights to these web pages based on the link analysis right so uh, naturally uh, this link analysis thing has been or link analysis concept has been proposed in uh, mid 90s so link analysis is not placed in, in the earlier times of the children designs or all kind of situations so it is the year of 19 i think 1992 the very first algorithm for link analysis at least for search engine search systems has been proposed and it has been considered that okay uh, if you are if you have extracted the data from a web page you should also consider the links available links placed on that particular web page to to rank this particular content which we have gathered from that particular web page right so along with the page content along with the page content which we have gathered now you can use the links placed on the web page to rank this page to place this particular web page into the ranking 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 among the all retrieve all matched results so if for suppose for a user search you have a system have extracted uh, 20 to 40 pages 20 to 40 different documents now by using this link and link analysis you can precisely place this particular page any particular page in this top 20 or top 10 something like that right and it is now so nowadays it is becoming a very important source of ranking source for of ranking because uh, in the modern time in the current time uh, each and every web page is having uh, some sort of links right if you observe the link of the web page of times of india web page of any 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 public domain pages there are a lot of ads has been placed so ads are also providing some kind of uh, ads images uh, videos so all of things you can see so these uh, these different I mean, third party pages their links their anchor text their images videos are some sort of links right so based on based on these uh, uh, you can say the anchor text kind of entities you can easily rank the web page the importance of that page so they are also controlling the ranking of certain page right in the results so uh, for, for from here we will be uh, having uh, with with us we will be having this anchor text as an input right so let's let's understand what is the anchor text actually means what are the possible types of it and how it could be utilized for the uh, ranking for a particular page right so naturally uh, anchor text is one entity so whenever we are having a web page content with us text is one part content text right traditional text is one part along with it we could have uh, so any any website could, could have these kind of text which is anchor text and sometimes it is having links explicitly links are, are also placed in and out link right so you can uh, correlate uh, these things so the property of an anchor text is like it is a very short right it should be it should also be short so you cannot have anchor text in a paragraph right you should be always have an anchor text a very short written text right uh, it is visible naturally to make it visible you should be having some property to highlight that highlight uh, that part of text so few years back, maybe before 90, uh, 99, 1998, uh, most of the websites are not having this property. They have anchor text placed on their websites, they, but they did not use to highlight, they did not use to use the coloring scheme or coloring pattern for these texts. But in the modern time, you have these properties that in a, in a particular web page, these anchor text has been usually having different color. And if you click on that, they usually have a different colors. So now coloring property of this anchor text has been utilized. It has been used, widely used by the website owner, right? And it is a clickable text naturally. So these three properties you should always have whenever you are creating your own website. And then whenever you are placing uh, 
a link to the different website naturally so if you are designing a website for your profile right and you are mentioning all the details about you your publications your organization your personal details uh, list of interests all these things so suppose you are creating a, your personal website and you want to place you want to place the link of nit kurukshetra so naturally along with your your text details you will be placing a link url of nit so www or uh, http.nitkurukshetra.com something like that kurukshetra.ac.in so i this is one way you can explicitly write the uh, you can say the uh, details of website uh, or you can place a alternate text right so you can you, you have this flexibility so anchor text so writing a an anchor text uh, on a web page is completely uh, uh, so a website owner is having this privilege right naturally nit kurukshetra website is there it is a destination website but if you are creating your your own page you can have this anchor text you can have this privilege to write the anchor text so you can write the whole description about the institute in one sen sentence or one paragraph and for this whole paragraph will be considered as a anchor text that is one possibility or you can simply place nit kurukshetra and then provide this web link nitkurukshetra.com something like that so this so you have this flexibility so the writing the anchor text is one of the critical aspect in the search engine system right because it does not belong to the the so this anchor text uh, length of anchor text the text you are using for anchor text depends on the website owner not to the destination website right so that's why it is very critical right because uh, whenever you are writing the anchor text whenever you, you are selecting or choosing a particular term or text to be used for anchor text is it is it is reflecting some sort of contextual information contextual when i say contextual it means where it is used where it is used what is the precise so you need to have some impression on the anchor text right you cannot use an it kkr to provide some sort of impression about an it kurukshetra because an it kkr might be a familiar keyword for the students for the faculties for the known in just but an idea care becomes a, a unfamiliar a, a vague term also for a person who are living in a different country right so you should always have a anchor text description with this impression that okay you should reflect some sort of impression about the destination page also right so from here now naturally uh, if you, you you have seen these kind of pages and these kind of uh, uh a text on the web page and these pages are having this property of uh, anchor text and they will be helping to uh, to reach to a certain destination page right so like like the typical uh html impression for these kind of elements could be like uh in the right side uh, figure you can you can easily see we have placed this uh, tiny dancing horse.com this is the destination uh, page this is the destination link and for this we could use anchor text tiny dancing horse in a in a different website something like that so as a an anchor text in the in the uh, source web page uh, this this uh, tiny dancing horse might be appearing as anchor text and when some user click on this text it will use this uh, www.tinydancing.com uh, as a target or the destination website right so this tiny dancing horse text will be decided by the source page owner and there is a no control of uh, the destination page owner to be uh, to be decided on, on the decision of how and what should be used as a anchor text right so typically whenever we have seen uh, any website or any uh, web page you could have different types of uh, anchor text could be used or being used right so the very first type is exact match exact match anchor text is what the example which we have seen so whatever is the name of website or whatever is the name of target link you can directly use the same anchor text like Uh, here it is used tiny dancing horse.com here we are using tiny dancing horse so whenever the link link description and the anchor text description are same then you can have this exact match based anchor text uh, the second possibility could be partial match right you can use the partially matching anchor text so the description url description or the target link description text description and 
income tax distribution are partially matching something like that right similarly you can use a brand name kind of uh, name to describe it to this to provide a description like in the upper page you can see here it is mentioned uh, uh, okay tutorial you can use tutorial is one kind of things uh, so you can use any brand uh, uh, name right that is the that is the plain type of in text uh, you can have explicitly written URL so in in some web pages you might have seen that uh, the website details website description is directly provided that www.google.com something like that so instead of having anchor text you could directly place a URL right similarly you can place some generic term that uh, you can have instead of anchor text for a target or for destination site or destination web page you can directly use click here right to provide uh, a hint that okay user needs or user can click on a particular uh, place and reaches to the destination uh, images are something uh, which are uh, basically now or newly introduced right so you can use here videos also so nowadays we are uh, getting a lot of a uh, lot of impression about videos also now nowadays videos are also placed on the uh, different websites uh, and if you click on the videos like uh, youtube thumbnails and all kind of things you will be navigated to the uh, youtube uh, page or youtube uh, profile where this video that video is actually placed right so these kind of so uh, these kind of uh, uh, anchor text has been used in the different kind of web sources right so after this uh, naturally the key challenge is to uh, have this this scenario that the web page owner does not control the anchor text right so web page means the destination web page owner so because our objective is to navigate a search into the destination page right so the destination page owner is not having any control on the anchor text anchor text is com completely decided or designed by the uh, the source page owner and that is the challenge right so because it is having a uh, effect on naturally the real the link relevancy uh, between the source and destination page so link relevancy is our typical uh, estimation or typical uh, measure that how two web pages are strongly related right strongly related strongly based strongly connected something like that so because uh, based on this uh, anchor text only you can estimate you can provide the opportunity to the user that okay if you are browsing on a certain page you could be navigated to these destination pages right As, so basically the trust uh, the importance the relevancy of this relationship importance of this source page uh, is purely based on the uh, anchor text right so uh, along with that uh, naturally it is affecting the ranking of both source and destination pages uh, destination pages uh, in in any futuristic queries so as far as ranking process or ranking part both queries are used both uh, these sources uh, link analysis uh, is used or text analysis is used uh, in the ranking of these source and destination pages right and typically we will be naturally digging upon digging upon these uh, this this term called seo which is search engine optimization so when we will be discussing upon this aspect which is one of the important part in modern days uh, search engine based uh, discussions or search engine based research areas so there we will be discussing upon uh, how and what could be placed on the anchor text so there we have these matrices like keyword density keyword difficulty and keyword trust and uh, uh, web page trust lot of things are there so there are around 27 matrices or 27 parameters has been designed uh, on which we can work upon to provide some sort of optimization to a certain web page right so people are uh, might having this impression that okay there could be some algorithm which are placing a certain web page on the search engine ranking so if user is searching for some term if user has submitted a keyword on the google search there will be around millions of pages and there are some reasons there are some algorithm reasons which 
because of which a certain page is appearing in the top 10 right so naturally each and every search engine is having their own algorithm to perform this link analysis to perform some link estimation or maybe importance of page estimation but it is purely based on the keywords the content the text and the structure which has been adapted for a certain page right so whenever you are designing your own website you should always take care about all these 31 or 28 features 28 properties if you have designed these or uh, these contents these portions of a web page by keeping these 28 and 31 features or measures or parameters of search engine optimization your website might be appearing in the top 10 top 20 something like that right so that's why it is very important to discuss this as search engine optimization aspect naturally one of the lecture or maybe two lectures will be devoted for that and from this anchor text point of view we have these two terms which are very important whenever we are discussing about about search engine optimization so what is the keyword we should be placing on the anchor text and how it is difficult Dif keyword difficulty means it is with respect to the user's possibility so difficulty on the keyword user difficulty on the keyword and you should be carefully placing this keyword on the anchor text so there is a correlation matrix for that uh, like for any website you should have this uh, sort of understanding uh, whenever we are deciding a proper keywords for anchor text to a particular website something like that right so these these things are, are naturally very important and we will be discussing upon uh, in in some lecture right so one one very important uh, aspect is that uh, all these uh, uh, all these contents uh, which we have extracted which we have received after link analysis right after link processing or link uh, analytics we will be keeping all these details into a separate space it will not be sent to the index data it will not be sent to the uh, uh, this uh, doc data document store because as of now uh, we have got two storage devices two storage entity one is called document data store which which is gathering each and everything which is has been extracted and second storage could be the index database at least in the index block so we will be having a separate third small entity of storage and where we will be placing all these extracted details during during the uh, link analysis right and it will be utilized for ranking the web page right so uh, naturally uh, whenever we are exploring or we are ex we are extracting or we are crawling the web pages naturally links are there so links are form of anchor text and the destination page link so there you need to have a separate computing block separate algorithm to perform link analysis the objective of link analysis is naturally to identify some sort of linkage between linkage between the pages dependent in pages right and naturally because nowadays we are getting a lot of spam pages a lot of you know uh, mal malicious pages on the internet so you should also uh, take care about these all kind of violations anomalies right so the objective of any link because link analysis is one of the important uh, research domain at least for the computer science because uh, link based on this link analysis there are many research domains has been conducted right so the the there are only two or three aims you could have for a link analysis algorithm the first is naturally to identify the similar links similar destination pages for a particular source page or for a particular search interest or for a particular objective and along with it it is very important to define identify which are the violations which are the pages which are the destinations which are creating misjudgment or misestimation for your similarity or for your interest right so whenever we are having uh, any kind of uh, scenario where link analysis is required you could have four different types of algorithm four different types of approaches right so first is naturally based on some heuristics you can always place a heuristic you can always place the objective uh, right so you can adopt any any optimization based algorithm you could have objective and based on that objective and a decision you can always have this analysis 
link analysis to be performed. Naturally, there is a template based link analysis also. For that, you need to have a template or structure. Based on that, you can perform the link analysis. Uh, and uh, there is a, this similarity based uh, approach. Similarity based approach is uh, approach which is uh, basically having some kind of scoring mechanism on the link analysis. The scoring mechanism is used to perform link analysis. Uh, right. So for all these four types or four categories of approaches, naturally objective is only to identify the similar patterns and natural, uh, objective is to identify the possible violations on the pages. Right. <coughs> so fourth type of uh, uh, this uh, link analysis approaches could be of statistical based approaches. Then you need to generate some kind of statistics uh, to support the to perform the link analysis. And among these uh, four types, uh, basically most of the uh, we can say link analysis algorithms which are used in the uh, search systems uh, uh, types of scenario are are based on the similarity uh, type of nature, right? So here you can see. Uh, we have placed some of the most important or potential algorithms, right? So these algorithms are similarity based. These all algorithms are similarity based uh, link, in, link analysis or link estimation approaches, uh, which are uh, proposed by the different organization for different application. So you can see we have uh, the very first identifier algorithm is naturally the page rank, right? So it was uh, it was uh, not proposed in 1999. It was proposed around 1996. But uh, the publication or maybe uh, research paper has been published uh, uh, in the year of 1999, right? Uh, all the patents are related to this page rank algorithm uh, is being uh, published in this year or may make published in the year of 1999 right so before uh, publishing this page rank algorithms there there is a simplified page rank algorithm has been used for around 12, 10 to 10, 10 to 12 years after that they have proposed the modified and advanced page rank algorithm and and then they have published an article they, then they have published the patents related to that algorithm and actually, each and every activity on the development of this page rank has been controlled and used by Google uh, Enterprise and Google uh, Search Systems organizers, right? And similarly, there are in the same year or the maybe same uh, time, there are uh, this algorithm called HITS, which is hyperlink induced topic search algorithm. Uh, and it is, it is currently being used in the ask.com uh, platform, right? And uh, along with it, uh, there is another project by IBM. It is called Clever, uh, and it is not having any published paper on it. But they are, they, it is one of the project uh, which is considering this role of links on the search-related activities. Right. Similarly, there is a little uh, called Trust Rank, which is published in 2009. It may be uh, in use before that, but it is published. The work of uh, the concept of work has been published in year 2009. Then there is a algorithm called Hummingbird. Uh, it is published in 2013, though it has been adapted in the year of 2009 itself. And some says because the article of the research publication which has published Hummingbird are the common uh, researchers who have worked upon the page rank, right? So page rank because one of the author in the page rank is the uh, Larry Page, which is who is the founder of uh, uh, the search system uh, by Google. So this that's why it is named as a page rank. So Larry Page is the uh, one of the person, one of the co-founder of uh, search system. So again, for the hummingbird also, for the hummingbird algorithm also, one of the co-author between uh, hummingbird and page rank has been common or uh, shared in. So uh, most of the people are having this impression that hummingbird is is an extension of a modified page rank, but it is not true. Uh, Hummingbird algorithm is altogether a novel work. They are having a different patents, different origin of work. They are having different concept of proof for that. So we can claim that they are partially having similarity, right? Because the context for, for both are same, right? Uh, but uh, now they, this hummingbird has been widely adapted by the different search systems which are based on semantic web nature, semantic properties of the text. 
right so with this uh, basically now uh, our objective uh, for the discussion uh, primarily will be to understand how page rank because page rank is the first uh, milestone algorithm to understand that uh, how link analysis or how encrypt text details could be used to rank the page right uh, so page rank is the first milestone of first important algorithm and uh, in the same year or maybe in the parallel concurrently same time we have uh, seen the hits algorithms also right so uh, basically we will be uh, having a discussion upon these two algorithms hits and page rank right so today we are going to discuss uh, how the basic philosophy of page rank because page rank is having i mean we are having page rank in the two versions first version is called simplified page rank and uh, second is called modified page rank which has been published also so you can have a lot of articles related to the modified or maybe updated uh, page rank algorithm and uh, if you are working up on the search system domain or maybe any kind of search system scenario uh, naturally we will be having some rank algorithms right so ranking is, is basically conducted twice in a search system within a search system we are performing ranking twice one is during this uh, index block or maybe the pre-processing block and another is during this uh, retrieval uh, block and or maybe the front side of the system so to page rank is widely used page rank is widely used in the index block in the sum in the sum research works the page rank is used in the front block in the retrieval block right so it is it is basically uh, it is a it is again uh, it is the decision of system designer where he is adopting the page rank algorithm. It can be placed on the index block or it can be placed on the retrieval block. So it is it is the decision of entirely decision of a design of system designer, right? So you cannot place page rank in the both blocks. That is for sure. Uh, you can place it is on the either side, right? So uh, so in the today's discussion, let us let's continue. Uh, we will be discussing on the basic page rank philosophy right so uh, the page rank algorithms uh, uh, both versions simplified and uh, modified and upgraded uh, page rank algorithm both are proposed by naturally one of the co-author or the main person behind it is the larry page who is the founder of co-founder of the search systems google search systems and that's why it is named uh, this is a page rank algorithm, right? So it is coincidentally happening that his surname is matching with the philosophy that okay, in, uh, the on intention of this algorithm is to rank the pages, web pages. So it is, but it is not primarily because of that. It is primarily because it is the it is the proposal of proposal of uh, uh, Larry Page. So <clears throat> let me let me uh, first read the uh, features of that. Then we will be uh, reading this philosophy. Right. So the, the aim of this page rank algorithm is to estimate, is to measure the importance of the web pages. That is for sure. We are trying to measure the importance. So now importance is very subjective. You can have, so if I raise a question, okay, how, how do you identify, how do you uh, estimate that uh, the importance of a certain individual? Right. So in your life, you might have dependent on someone some person uh, uh, some individuals are dependent on you some something so so in a social circumstances in the social uh, scenario if we ask you uh, a simple formula or maybe simple proposed idea or strategy to evaluate the importance of an individual you could have your own philosophy you could have your your own formulation right and so similarly uh, the philosophy the purpose of uh, this uh, page rank is to uh, estimate that or to measure the importance of web pages and actually this importance estimation this is score or anything could be used for ranking ranking of the retrieval result that's what we have already discussed and objective objective is basically so aim is that it is it is basically evaluating the importance of page naturally to achieve uh, or to estimate importance you could have your own mechanism so page rank has been uh, using this numerical weight it is using a numerical score which is often called rank score also right so it is using uh, this numerical value 
which is referred as a rank score of a page uh, for each web document or for each because in the link analysis the basic philosophy is that each and every entity each and every document each and every uh, web page is placed on a network right and from that node or from that no uh, document there will be a lot of in and out links so each and every situation will be mapped into the uh, a graph structure or a graph conceptual framework so it is it is basically assigning or evaluating a numerical weight or rank for each and every document each and every page right so basically uh, what we have observed during the study during the literature uh, exploration uh, two uh, two sources are very important whenever you have adopted the page rank first is that it is simply using the number of links number of links is one aspect from these number of total number of links it is evaluating quality of links now i'm saying quality of links right number and quality both are very important aspect as far as uh, link and as far as anchor text concern right so quality of link both are estimated and based on that it is deriving some numerical weight so this rank philosophy is rank estimation is purely based on count number of links and quality of links now number of link is qualitative measure you can have always this number that on a web page uh, 20 30 14 uh, links are placed out of these 20 some are in some are out link right so that you can always perform but quality of link estimation is again a challenging task so for that uh, so for that there is a proposal in the in the modified uh, page rank right so it is not that uh, these number of links and quality of links both are proposed in the very first version of page rank right so that's what we are opening about also so assume so basically to perform this estimation to perform this assessment uh, uh, this this whole assumption is that that uh, whenever we are performing this uh, counting on links and quality of links the assumption is that uh, any website could be a, having higher importance right so more important websites are likely to receive more links from other websites so that is the simple philosophy so it is the assumption that any website which will have a lot of links in and out links will be of more importance that's why we are considering numbers and actually quality aspect also so uh, it is not uh, a good website which is have which is having lot of lot of links from the same web page kind of situations so you should always uh, concern about the quality of links right because you cannot have this kind of spamming situations so having links of the same destination page on a website on a web page is a scenario of spamming right so you are trying to create an impression that this website is having lot of links but it is coming from the same destination it is having this kind of biased quality so you should always balance these kind of situations so that's why quality of link is now becoming uh, important phenomena right so uh, what how it is doing it is simply so page rank is simply creating or deriving a probability distribution so probability distribution naturally whenever you are talking about probability you should be having some formulation for it distribution means from where it is coming and how it is affecting right so it is simply based on a probability distribution used to represent the possibility or likelihood that a person randomly clicks on links will arrive at any particular page and this philosophy is referred as a random surfer right so random surfer philosophy gives you the idea that at any point of time at any point of stage uh, your search is unbiased as far as searching support concerns so page rank will give you a, a impression that uh, this page rank algorithm will always will be uh, unbiased will be always estimating the ranks with unbiased manner because it has adapted this random surfer approach which is saying that the algorithm is basically based on this random surfer approach it will be estimating it will be calculating the ranks of any page at any stage of search with 
the likelihood of any possible pitch it is not biased towards any similar or so called matching or so called closely related pitch it will not be biased towards any kind of results it will be estimating the distribution it will be generating the rank score for a web page with respect to its likelihood for unbiased estimation right so random surfer is the philosophy you can uh, read about this random surfer philosophy uh, because it is having a lot of importance for the person who are working upon the nlp based algorithm so it is one of the established approach uh, for uh, you know, probability distribution on the uh, various nodes based or various link analysis based estimation or data processing right so as far as versions concerned uh, again we are uh, you know, seeing that uh, page rank is having two versions one is simplified another is modified which is which is uh, modified is the uh, is the version which is being used by the search systems google search systems so whether it is google scholar whether it is google page whether uh, where we have placed google image video and all these things so for each such uh, activity google is having this page modified page in algorithms so one thing is very surprising that uh, they have their published uh, uh, research articles on modified page rank in year 1990 so after that they have not published any versions so naturally they have modified the page rank algorithms they might be updating on year wise also so if, if you can relate they might be using this page rank algorithm for 2020. So they have, they are having uh, this versions, latest version of page rank, but they have not published it on any domain, and they had not make it, uh, made, make it, uh, you know, use, make it available for the public domain. So that is uh, something very surprising, and uh, each and every patent, each and every published article has been expired now. So. Each and every article which is published for this page rank algorithms has been expired. Its patents has been expired. They have not renewed it, and they have kept it in a I mean, secretive, top secretive uh, uh, concept of work actually. So uh, whatever version we are having uh, in the public domain is of 1999 uh, version of page rank, right? So the version which is released in year 1999. It was referred as a modified page rank algorithm because in simplified page rank algorithm, it is considering so the simplified page rank algorithm is considering only inbound links, right? And initialized with the same rank score to each page. So that is the philosophy of simplified page rank. So the first impression, first version of page rank is having this idea that okay, naturally links are important but only incoming links to a certain page, incoming links are important. So if you want to score a given set of pages, naturally uh, in the starting, you will be assigning the probability score, equal probability score, equal rank score to each page. And after the second iteration, because after the second iteration or maybe after the second step, you are estimating the rank of the, each page by considering only incoming links not outbound or not outgoing links and in the case of modified in the case of modified link uh, we have not given any initial score to any page that is the chain happened and now we are considering in and out bound links and their quality both right that is the basic philosophical difference between a simplified page rank and the modified page rank right so uh, basically, uh, naturally, I will be sharing uh, simple notes to understand that how simplified is working. And in the next lecture, we will be uh, discussing upon the uh, modified page rank algorithm, its example, and HITS algorithm and its example, right? So uh, along with this uh, lecture note, I will be sharing a simple note or simple philosophy uh, or maybe simple explanation to understand that how simplified algorithm is working right uh, it will be uh, it will be a good good uh, uh, basically explanation on uh, basically to understand that how these algorithms are working so uh, i have just uh, taken out this uh, content from one of the websites 
and it is uh, uh, basically yeah this is the notes which i have prepared so it is giving a basic idea about that how this is how this simplified page rank algorithm is in computing the page rank score so you can read these instructions these are the very uh, you know layman form uh, written instructions how they are computing so you can go through these instructions and understand uh, this is how basically it is estimating the scores in the simplified page rank algorithms naturally from here uh, this extension of uh, the simplified rank has been done right so there is this factor called damping factor it is used and from here uh, there is a there is basically directions or you can say there is a is the first step to uh, towards the uh, modified or to the advanced page rank has been started right so i hope things are clear now uh, if you have anything to raise you can uh, discuss here one of the question has been posted and